Hi everyone, this video is going to show you how to calculate real variables in general and I'm going to use the real wage as my example. In an earlier video I showed how, you how to calculate real GDP from nominal GDP in the price level and I'm, it, the procedure is essentially exactly the same. So you can use this procedure anytime the variable you're using is expressed in dollars such as real wages, real consumption, real GDP, um, just about anything that's expressed in dollars you can convert from nominal to real terms using this procedure. Um, uh, the one type of variable you can are variables expressed in percentage points such as the interest rate. There is a distinction between nominal and real interest rates so you should look at that video. And here I'm just really going for the basic intuition to give you an idea of what we mean by a nominal variable and a real variable. So the nominal variable is really the way we experience the world. The real variable is a quantity. It's in a, measured in stuff. So the easiest way for me to make this distinction is just to go ahead and have a very simple one good world. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to say then your nominal wage in 2013 is ten dollars an hour okay now your price level in 2013 of apples so we're just gonna go ahead and stick with apples is the one good in this economy we're gonna say is one dollar per apple oops and in fact I want to do the division stuff so that's apple Okay. Now, suppose I say, let's go ahead and calculate the real wage. If I use the price level as my abbreviation for the average price of goods and services, in this case, there's only one good, it's apples, so the price of apples is the price level. And I use the nominal wage, uh, which I will abbreviate W, is how much you're earning per hour of work. And the real wage is how much stuff you can buy. So nominal wages are going to be in dollars, real wages are going to be in stuff. How much stuff can you buy? So let's go ahead and calculate the real wage in 2013. Well that should be the nominal wage in 2013 divided by the price level in 2013. Well, the real wage is ten dollar or excuse me the nominal wage is ten dollars an hour whereas the price level is one dollar per apple and if you take a look at this the dollars are, or signs are actually going to cancel so with the units of measurement here the dollar signs are going to actually cancel and when you do all the division and stuff you're going to end up with ten apples per hour is your real wage. So even though you're paid in dollar bills, ten dollar bills for every hour you work, that's your nominal wage. That's and oftentimes that's important, but many times that's not what economists care about. We often care about real quantities. So what we need to do is convert that ten dollars uh, no, nominal wage per hour into a real wage per hour, which is the amount of stuff you can buy. Well, if the only pro, um, good or service out there is apples and each apple is one dollar then your real wage is going to be ten dollars an hour divided by one dollar per apple and you're going to end up with ten apples per hour notice this is in stuff it tells you how much um, physical stuff you can go out and buy you can buy ten apples with one hour's worth of work so you can say the person's wage is either ten dollars an hour if you want to think in terms of nominal or ten apples per hour if you want to think in terms of real now, in principle, this calculation is a lot more complicated because you're not going to use the price of apples. You're going to use the average price of goods and services, whether it's a consumer price index, a GDP deflator, or whatever. And since those um, indices are often multiplied by 100, um, for, or multiplied by 100, so the base year is 100, not 1, you'd want to end up multiplying by 100 in this calculation. But the basic approach is the same. Another important point that this raises, the real wage can fall even if the nominal wage is constant, but the price level rises. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we go ahead and change 
Cure keep the nominal wage constant at $10 an hour in 2014, but let's go ahead and change the price level. Let's say the price level doubles to $2 an apple in 2014. That means when we go ahead and calculate the real wage in 2014, we're going to divide by the nominal wage of $10 an hour, but we're also going to divide by the price level of $1, or excuse me, $2 per apple. Notice, the price of apples has doubled, but the nominal wage remains unchanged. So when we actually go through and do all our division, we're going to find out that the real wage has fallen to $5 per apple. That's an extremely important point. We'll get back to this when we talk about sticky prices and causes of business cycles later on. But the real wage that workers earn can fall, even if nominal wages are constant, if the price level is rising. All right. So the big takeaway from this video is I just want you to think in terms of we experience the world in nominal terms, and nominal wages, and nominal prices, and nominal interest rates. So those things are often measured in dollars. Um, however, real things, real wages, real interest rates, real GDP, these are all quantities. They're all the amount of stuff you're earning an hour, or the amount of stuff that the economy produces, or the amount of stuff that you're paying to borrow if we're talking about the real interest rate, or the amount of stuff you're receiving to go ahead and as your reward for savings. So the key point, we experience the world in nominal terms, but economists often care about real variables, which are actual quantities. Okay, thank you very much.